don't get the magazines out and start making a list of all the stuff you have to have on the boat. No. Let the boat teach you what it needs. Bimini has gutters on it to catch water. The Bimini has gutters in it. That's an experiment. Where, uh, where, where's you that? Your hand. Right here. Yeah. That's for catching water, right in there. Huh. And where does it go? How does it work? Well, we stick a 5 8 plastic hose here. Wow. Plug the other end with a wine cork. I will put a wine cork right there. Yep. And then a hose over tech. there. Not high tech. Nope. Have not you, ha high tech. Have you have you tested it? Yeah, it kind of works. It kind of works. It's, it's, we need more space in, here. Yeah, there needs to be a bigger fitting in here to have it stand out a little. Because there's usually so yeah. much water that just boom over. Oh, it goes right over. And this is a nice large place to catch water. Yeah. You know, you scrub, you let it run a little bit first to get all, whatever dirt's on there. You know, scrub it down and then then let her go. Wow. Very our water, cool. We have two water tanks and the water fills are right here on the deck. So How much a, water do you carry? 100 gallons. It's a short run for the hose. Oh, straight from the Bimini straight to the deck fill. Yeah. I see. Center cockpit catch. Yep. So it gives you a really nice motion underway. It protects you from the stern waves and it gives you a nice aft cabin for living. Yeah. And separates the uh, your cabin from the guests if you have guests aboard. And gives you great access into the engine compartment. Really easy, hmm. as you'll see. Aye. But uh, here on the on the uh, on the aft we have uh, solar panels that Don put on. He had the Aye. stern rails made up to accommodate these panels. These panels are Kyocera. Oh yeah. Which we can highly recommend. We yeah. bought them a while ago and they stand behind their products. They do? Absolutely. You've had some good customer service experience? Yes, we We've had them. Don bought them and, and had them installed. And when we were in Grenada, he noticed that the output was not what it should be. Contacted the company and he said one of our panels, you know, it has brown right here and the output, and he gave all the the um, electrical data that he'd been keeping track of. I told her uh, that we had two panels on the boat, and basically we were getting half output from one panel. Half half the cells were open somehow. Aye. She in one email she said, "Oh, we'd like to replace both your panels with new." Uh, at that point, the panels were eight years old. And uh, we're in Grenada. And by the way, Wow Iron Water World yeah. here in Grenada handles our panels, and they've helped us with these problems before. Oh my God! We just you... contact him. So we contacted Iron Water World, and Jonathan, who's the manager, said, "Oh, it'll take weeks for them to send replacement panels. I've got them in stock. Why don't you just take two of my new ones, and I'll put your replacement panels back in stock." So. The only expense we had was a bus ride. So you contacted Kyocera directly at their office in the States? Uh, whatever's on the website. Wow. Wherever that is. Yeah. And they just replaced they were it. Yep. 20 so we year can't say good years. enough about them. I mean, they were wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. So what we do. Oh my God, look at that. So no what, way. For, you know, we have one. Wow. Like this, depending on which angle you want. Yeah. And then um, this is just to lift it because it's easy, and then I unhook so there's no shadow yeah. on the panel. And then you can let it down. And this uh, pipe yeah. has holes in it when you pull that up, so it's easier to see. If you'll see oh, here, we yeah. have a pin, and there's a hole, and you just. Wow. That's it on both sides. And then you can release the panel That's and you're good to go. 
That is really and well engineered. Yeah, Don designed all that. And then the other th good thing is these panels tuck inside the tow rail, so when we dock, there's never any worry about the safety of the uh, solar panels. They tuck yeah, in the tow rail. Right. Now look. Wow. Now look, you see, we're yeah. inside the, uh, yeah. the uh, rail. Inside the rail. Yep. I'm yeah. envious. This is really well engineered. Yeah. This is amazing. We can use them at sea, which is good. We don't have wind and steering, so we depend on autopilot. You depend on autopilot, so you need electricity. Yeah. yeah. Both of these are running backstays. But the mizzen. mizzen. Oh, they are? Yep. We, uh, <laughs> so one day you're like, hey, what if maybe we, we could... Uh, some other things to right there. They're <laughs> useful. Well, we use these to pick this outboard up. Uh, and when we have our quarter boat on the daddy, you can just swing the outboard aft and put it right on the boat. We put it right on the boat. The stern of the quarter boat's right there, and what? we use the running rigging to do that. So it works nicely. That's amazing. Yep. Oh, and so. here's that other Samson post. Yep, there's one on either side. Oh, and then instead the, of a big cleat, you've got a Samson post. Yep. Huh. Do you like it? Absolutely, because yeah. it doesn't. That you have less chafe. Less chafe. Because you're up higher. Uh -huh, okay. Uh -huh. You're not rubbing on anything. Oh and yeah. And it's real solid, no problem. Wow. So you can you can lower the dinghy from here and board it from right here. Yep. That's it's a big step. And you notice these are at an angle going out. It's yeah. at the same angle as the transom, so it's very attractive from a visual standpoint when you're off the boat. It also gives you a whole lot more feel of room here because otherwise you would be here your Afriel would be here, so it gives you a big feel of much more room. Well, yeah, it does, it does. Because <laughs> of the angle, particularly when you're furling the mizzen, yep. you can just step right up here. And you're at the you're end. Secure. Oh yeah. See, you're you know, leaning against huh. this. Wow. Do sail ties or whatever. So that was another reason to do that that yeah, way. Well, that was a yeah, just an added, added thing. We have a uh, a stern or a lunch hook. A lunch hook right there? Yeah, mm -hmm. if, I... if 23 fortress. Huh, so two fortresses. Yep, Do you, nice and light. I damaged my fortress and called fortress and asked if they could help me repair it and they just sent me new parts. Really? Yeah, without even... Wow. They said, fabulous. you know, I'm really sorry, but we're going to have to charge you for uh, a little bit for shipping. <laughs> I was thrilled. <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> There's the insulator for the uh, backstay where the antenna for the single sideband is. And Don put this plastic pipe over top so oh, that yeah. somebody doesn't grab it, you know, oh, they don't yeah. get any shock. So this covers, you know, usually they put it up high up or high. they just tell you don't. But this is an easy fix. Yeah. You just put PVC pipe. Now to make the PVC pipe last, yep. you paint it. Oh, really? And, it, and just a layer of paint will keep the plastic from deteriorating in the sun. It's well, great. Why is the insulator that low, though, on the... Well, as a matter of fact, I don't care too much for that arrangement because I'd like to see the insulator right there pinned. Right here. All the way at the bottom, yeah. There's because there. we have three swages there yep. where we really only need one. If you put the insulator up high, now you have to try to uh, separate this black lead right. from the grounded part. The, the actual wire that connects yes. to the you stay. You can get an RF from the wire just as well as you can from the... Uh, really? Oh yeah. Even with the, pla the, the well, that's coating? That's not an electrical shock. It's yeah. like being in a microwave oven. Oh my god. The RF, you know. So, so the hazard, you don't... You don't save anything by putting the insulator up high. It just makes trouble. Um, so the original insulators on the old rig were Ronstan brand, and they do make a version that has the eye on one end and a swage on the other. Aye. And, and these guys don't. When we change this rigging, I'll go back to these guys and talk to them a bit because I think we could talk them into making a screw on uh, eye. To, to, to put it lower and yeah. then just have one swage. Yeah. Wow, I've never seen the insulator that low. And I never knew that you can get a burn from the wire that connects to the, right. the stay. So the pipe 
takes care of the electrical uh, shock aspect. This PVC pipe. Oh yeah. And it should make the riggers happy. And I see you have an antenna there. Is yeah, that a VHF not, antenna? Yeah, it's a spare. A spare. Because we have one at the top of the mast. But you have another as a as yeah, a sort of backup. Know. You never know. And a life sling. Yep, in the plastic container. And your life raft. Yep, this is mounted on what is known as a turtle. We a had turtle. those made. The boat did not come with them, so the first time around the world, she didn't have these. Oh. We had on the forward hatch and on the aft hatch, we had those made to prevent water from coming in underneath of the uh, hatch uh, tops. And right. it also here gave us a place to put the life raft. Yeah, on deck where you can get to it. It's one of those expenses that you hope you never use. Right. You've got a lot of money involved in. Yeah. But that's the way it is. The other thing, uh, right behind you, is the. Um, I like what Don did there. Is uh, with the man overboard pole. He's got the man overboard pole. It's sitting sitting in a. Uh, Again, PVC pipe. If yep. you'll notice, the light is actually attached to here. And once you pull the pin and throw it over, then that all goes out with it. Aye. It's all in one. Aye. You know how you normally get fiber? Yeah. Well, this has been painted to, to for the sun protection. <laughs> and you put, and again, put a uh, umbrella over the plastic so that it, it'll protect it because the sun just eats up stuff terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, so that was pretty cool. And then mounted it on a, on a starboard bracket. Wow. And this, you know how the floating line deteriorates in the sun, so we stuffed it up in a little bag to try and protect it. So there's another thing Don did. He did an improvement, which among other things, he put uh, an outdoor shower here on the outside. <laughs> and that was accommodated when he replaced these. And then also in the winch base, he's just doing some repairs and took the winches. These are the primaries. He took those off for rebuilding. Yep. But this opening here is the exhaust from the outgo of the engine room. And this is the in intake of the engine room to keep it cool. Wow. Intake and exhaust right there. Yep. The old ones were these stainless steel clamps and we would slice our ankles. So this, there's no way to do that. Well, when it's cold, we stuff a rag in the exhaust side, and right here, inside the cockpit, it, we pull the cover off, and now you have warm air coming out into the cockpit. <laughs> you put a Whoa. blanket over your legs, and your legs are nice and warm. So, wow, the heating for the cockpit from the engine room. Right. right. That was pretty handy on the Erie Canal. Oh yeah, well, we left in October, and we're sailing in November, that was a big Motoring. help. Motoring wow. a lot, you know. I've actually never seen a boat with a cockpit that's heated from the heat from the engine room. I, it, it makes yeah. so much sense. It was an easy fix. It's waste heat. So then waste then heat, why not get rid of it? So in here, the, another thing, if you'll move over here, I'll show what it is. In the <laughs> old way, right here was where the shore power hooked up. Shore power in the okay, cockpit, in yeah. The cockpit, yeah. And people stepped on it. Wires everywhere. Yeah. Well, it was not a good thing. So, what Don did, I'll move over here, is put the shore power here, and again, on the outside, there's a hole with a deck plate, Aye. and you undo that, and your wire is not in the cockpit where you can trip on it. Yeah. And it protects it from salt water, because you have a little cover, but it's also protected up there. While he was putting the shore power, well, why not put two 110 outlets and then two 12 volt outlets? So we have the whole thing under here. So we have 12 wow. volt there and the 110 inside the coming. Okay. Wow, I really like these storage spaces in the yeah, cockpit. Well, really work nicely. accessible. And, so uh, that's another difference in our boat. Um, Majority of the 41s have actually have propane tanks in the combings. Oh, the yeah. old uh, uh, side uh, mount Lay skinny up. cylinders, which yeah, they're, they're hard to find now, hard to get refilled because of the uh, valve. Valve, or, mm. valve deal. But Southern Cross originally had a kerosene stove 
Ooh. So they did the these open combings, which we like a lot. You know, cockpit trash that's yeah. always floating around. Sure. Yeah. You always have something. You yeah. Know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and somewhere yeah. to stow so, it is key. Yeah. I converted the stove to propane, and uh, we built a box on the stern for a propane tank. Yeah, we have a lazarette back there. Oh, yeah. 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 Wow. I want to get the other zipper done. Oh, yeah. This is easy. This is easy, you know, to make. It's not that form-fitted around the uh, wheel itself. Uh-huh. And, uh... Oh, wow. So this is the ori original compass that went around the world. Oh, it's huge. Recently, Don added these boxes on either side. You know, a lot of people have just the round things just to put your glass or cup or mug or whatever. But we did bigger so you could put any size in there, whatever right. you want to set here. But then right. there's openings so that it doesn't hold water. Yeah. What a great place to put your cup. Yeah, a <laughs> cup or wine glass or whatever. Or oh. binoculars. Yeah. Know? And, and then, then, you know, you're supposed to lubricate your steering on a regular basis. Uh-huh. Well. Oh, my God. So there you have so it. So it's easy. Instant access. Instant access. That is amazing. So did, you know, did you design yeah, this? Yeah, these are just little things that, uh, that make we, it this easy. we call wogamizing. What do you call? The last name is Wagaman. Yeah. So this is Wagamizing. <laughs> <laughs> it's wow. just fun. But, you know, one of the things we said we'd talk about with you is how, is to give people some ideas. That, for their own boats. For their own. Uh, sure. And one of the things that I really believe in is to start simple, get a boat, if you if you can have it for a long time before you go cruising, that's what that's great. But whether you can or not, don't get the magazines out and start making a list of all the stuff you have to have on the boat. No. Let the boat teach you what it needs, and let your experience convince you uh, how to do things. A really good example: when I bought this boat, all the instruments are hanging with the wiring loose and everything, and I thought Man, that's tacky. I need to have a nice panel you know with everything set in it yeah like the dashboard of a color a jaguar that would be nice yeah <laughs> <laughs> i never did it and i now know that i'm a lot happier having access to all that wiring and whatnot simple simple yeah this uh, binnacle guard we just put on recently oh yeah and it's been something that was really neat because we would grab the Unfortunately, the compass, which is not the place to grab, nice. and because number one, this comes off. <laughs> you end up with that in your hand. This is not a good thing. And uh, so that's wow. not a good thing. And uh, now we have both this and this. But anyway, this protects it. And then the other thing we did, we never had a cockpit table. Oh. And again, this is very simple. That's Beautiful. it. Now you have a table. Beautiful. What a what an amazing cockpit. It's really comfortable and it's big, you a lot can sleep of room. in it. Yeah. And uh, the seating is is the deck. So seating is the deck. Yep. It's, yep. It, it's deck level, deck structure. So she doesn't look too uh, bulbous in the center. You know how a lot of center cockpit boats I they jack up the deck to make headroom underneath kind of messes with the looks of the boat. We've got a big cockpit locker here. This is a, uh, a life jacket bag right. that holds six and it goes all the way down in there so we can get in there ourselves. If this is empty, we can get in there ourselves. The Edson hand bilge pump, you each, each pump is a gallon. I've never seen a manual bilge pump that large. I've seen a lot of them that are a bit smaller. That's huge. Yep. And uh, this is for the engine room ventilation that we were talking about. Oh, over yeah. Here. Right the there. Intake and exhaust. And all our spare lines and yep. stuff. You know, stuff. Boat stuff. There's a yeah, spotlight. Fire yeah, fire extinguisher, fire extinguisher here. We heard a story from a friend about a fire aboard. And 
they were on Lake Erie uh, in an aft cockpit boat, and they looked at each other because the VHF radio, the life jackets, everything, and the fire extinguishers were all down below where the fire was. Oh God! We couldn't get to it. So as soon as we heard that story, we started moving things to the cockpit. I. Locker. You can get to so it. we can, you can yeah. pull it, pull the fire extinguisher out to put it out down below if you yep. can't get down there to get to one of the fire extinguishers, which we have, you know, several throughout the boat. Yep. But you need to have them anywhere you're going to be. Yeah. And we're up here in the cockpit, locked. Wow. You know, this is the living room. Anyway, so that's the cockpit locker. Do you have an enclosure? No. No, no just a bit me okay. and, and Dodger. So when we're underway and it's cold, we tend to one on either side kind of hunkered and you're in in um you know whether it's a storm or whatever uh you know people tried to talk us into getting an enclosure and maybe at some point we will but mm. so far it hasn't been an issue yep have gauges are here the old data marines are old still data marines still working, still working. wow <laughs> and uh Simran. that's our autopilot we have two the other one is the uh auto helm to back up. Yeah, that was the first one, and it was, uh, you didn't want anybody following you because it was pretty embarrassing. What, <laughs> which, the boat which, would go. <laughs> which one? This one? That yeah. one. Oh, yeah, this I really? Embarrassing. This one's not. <laughs> this one's a nice one. I uh, but you that have this a as, a, as a backup. We should left it on, you know, because that was the first one, and then upgraded. Wow, it's it's integrated inside of the box. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the motor's we don't inside. have the little traditional ground binnacle, the motor had to go somewhere. Oh, yeah. Wow. Hole saw. <laughs> yeah. So, wow. we need to give you, uh, what is it, a caveat or uh, down below, you know, the boat's on the hard, which, you know, cruising boats have to do periodically. And uh, this is our time, and so the boat's a mess because we're and actually remodeling the interior and doing all the projects we've saved up for all these years since we've had it hauled out to do all at once. So down below is a mess. Just FYI, this is the before.